Okay, welcome to episode 7 of the time-lapse build, and hopefully nothing goes wrong in this whole explanation. I lost absolutely all the recordings for making this video, so this is just going to be a walkthrough of the ship, and because my recording software is being really, really weird with Space Engineers, I'm getting an extremely loud hum if I record the video over top of the game while I'm playing. It's not any kind of game background noise, it's something to do with, it's like interfering with everything itself. So I'm really just kind of watching what I'm doing right now, I'm going to try to explain it, and I have this giant cold going on. So first thing is we changed the lower part of the chin, there's no more command seats down there, and this gives us a better view over uh, while we're piling the vehicle. The bridge area has been completely redone. We're using uh, rotors and small grids to kind of uh, give us a small grid area to where we can use that to make more detailed parts. We've got a projector table. Hopefully when we get the scripts up, we can use the one that allows us to resize and use different grid sizes on a small projector so we can you know, use a large grid ship and have it projected down to, this, to the same size as the table. This should be something that should be able to be done. It was on a part of a mod a long time ago, so hopefully it still works. Add some pillars for some lights. Uh, try to give it a little bit more lit in the area. So uh, we've got all of the monitors. Those should be used with uh, like the live video feed and everything. And that was just me taking a peek showing, hey, you know, there's going to be little falls using small grid to large grid. Uh, you could actually see where I put the landing gear in. And I'm sorry, I do have a very, very bad flu right now. So my voice is going to sound funny. And like I said, I was getting kind of irritated at this. So this is what I'm putting out. And I know I shouldn't put out anything besides something being 110% perfect, but you know, here we go. Uh, this side we're going to use for, you know, looking at a vehicle that we're coming up onto with a Ford camera. This one's going to be the one that we're going to be using, uh, looking at live video feed for when we're going to line up the ship over top of whatever we're going to be tearing down with uh, the, the arms on the side. And then we've got our triple by threes. These are for generator outputs, battery, oxygen, how much cargo we're taking, and things of that nature. And here I was explaining, okay, I want to take this part up and over, hopefully with some movable small grid, more monitors, that way the pilot, because that is the main pilot, so you can see more of, you know, more information to him without having to look outside of his view range. And here we're just kind of looking at each one of the crew quarters. I really wish Keen would implement some of the mods, like uh, the the interior decoration mod would be, you know, number one up on my list. Uh, it would add so much more to the vanilla game, so you wouldn't have to build like all this intricate stuff. You know, the bridge. Yeah, we we're gonna have to do some more stuff to it, but. There's a lot of things in that mod that would be very, very useful and would keep the block count low. And we're down inside the med bay and just kind of looking over the new textures and everything, how things have changed. Except for that one little guy right there. It's kind of a ugly <laughs> because all of those center vents face one way, but not that one. And uh, we're just going to move on back to the rear part of the front and take a look at our gyro racks and we have eight per side right now kind of keeps the ship turning kind of slow I kind of like that I don't think a ship this size should be quick to maneuver it rolls pretty decent but turning on the z-axis was kind of slow which is kind of nice I fly around without the inertial dampeners on a lot anyway I uh, kind of got used to Kerbal Space Program where things didn't automatically slow down. So having that that heavy weighted feel of something to me is okay. And it's something, you know, I kind of design my ships around anyway. I always try to use uh, small and large thruster packs 
that are switchable. So we have something that we can get going up to speed and then slowing down. And now we're going to make our way back to the rear of the ship. And I was kind of worried here. The game has crashed six times right here every time I was trying to record this. So I was kind of like, oh, well, if I click this and it fails, I'm probably going to go back to sleep and I'll have all kinds of that amount of fun. Now, the distance between the front part of the ship and the rear part of the ship is 300 meters or 100, uh, 100 large blocks. And here we're just looking at one of the, this is the dead center ship, 50 blocks, 150 meters. And this is the area where the crew would go into to make the transfer from one grid to the next where your crane and arms will be. And we've already got the rotors set up. I was going to make the small rotor or small block, small grid. Ugh, I'll get it out here one of these days. But you can't transfer a lot of the materials through the small grid. And the whole point of me making a small grid would have been have a small like cannon arm. So just going to make it large grid and try to make it look as good as we can. And here we're moving back onto the main engineering deck, which has been completely redone. We've moved a lot of things around, so I'm going to try to explain the best I can of what the decision process was. So the first thing you'll see is the ship is asymmetrical now. So we've got a hangar on one side and the engine pack on the other side. This was symmetrical in the beginning, but I lost a lot of door space due to thruster placement in the first place, and then... It looked really odd with thrusters down low and then a large hangar area. So we're going to try this out and see what it does. This this is big enough to where you can fly a decent sized ship into to be either worked on or tore down. And we've got our fish bones inside of here, which is our main excursion craft. So we can actually enter into another ship and take parts of it that, you know, we, we don't want to tear down the whole thing. So... We can just take the small one in and take little chunks at a time of like reactors or jump drives or something like that. And then uh, we'll move over to the, the main reverse of thruster pack. Now the, the 90 degree square here blocks is while the ship is asymmetrical, I want the width of the ship to be symmetrical. So it doesn't get like this hunchback kind of feel to it to where one side is so much heavier than the other side and in doing this we've actually gained some more engines anyway so we've gained three on the bottom and one additional engine on the reverser pack and I'd like to make this to be able to land on a moon I know I said before that I wouldn't right now its weight is 21 million tons or 21 million kg I'm sorry whatever that equates into tons and I'm sure it's going to get heavier as we go and that's just going to be empty without the cargo racks full we actually gained uh, five more hydrogen tanks than what we had before so that extends our range out quite a bit especially when you're just using that energy to get up to speed and you're not going to slow down with you know you're not going to be constantly you having to throttle up uh, the rear thruster pack has stayed the same. We need to kind of sculpt this all in to where it's not box on box on box. And we can see our jump drives set here. And I kind of wanted that to be an area by itself that we could, that we could lock down in case something happened. Like if we were to collide with something inside the hangar bay. You know, if you're bringing something in, it's going to be kind of tore down. You want to close that off so you're not going to damage your jump, back, uh, jump drives while pulling something in. And... I'm gonna where I place that block. I'm gonna move the main engineering deck down to that level, and I want to do something different with the reactors. I don't want them to just be stationary. I want to kind of do something fun with them. I'm not sure what. I know everybody kind of spins them all in one axis, and then does some other things. Uh, one of the Reddit users the other day posted a video that he had a sphere type reactor set up uh, where the reactor spun inside of three sets of rings. I'm not saying I want to copy that exact thing, but you know, something along those lines, something where it's just 
fun and kind of fits the feel of the ship because this is supposed to be a more industrial type of deal. So I kind of want it to feel older, not as snazzy and new and and everything. You know, I, I want it to feel like it's something that people would actually use and, and everything would have a purpose. And the, again, this is the center of the ship where we're going to have our uh, arm, grinder arm set up. Uh, one will be facing forward, one to the rear, and they'll swing out down over to the sides and, you know, start tearing into the ship. And if you don't want it all, you can open up a hole, use the ship bone, the fish bones, go inside, and, you know, just do your work that way. Again, you know, this is just kind of an idea that I, I just started making something. So this is where we're at now. And now we're on to the front. I've done a little bit more work to the chin area of the ship. I've got rid of the antennas. Whenever the block change come, yeah, everything looks, you know, kind of cool. But some of the blocks don't anymore. Uh, two of the blocks are the one by one wheel and the interior column. Whenever they're ground down, they don't have the same look as the other ones, and the wheel center is not colorable as the old ones were, where you can make, you know, like pipes with uh, girding around them. So we kind of changed that up. We lost one reverser uh, whenever I, I read the, this area, but it kind of flows a little bit better. And inside here, we got rid of our one by one wheel pipe and just replaced it with some red interior blocks. Kind of give it again that more industrial look. And I'm not really happy with this area of the ship. Uh, I think it looks all right, like it serves its purpose. It, you know, there's a lot of vision that you can see, you know, as you're working and everything, but it's kind of bland. And again, on the top of the ship, I want to add something more. I don't know if we have another area that goes up into like an observation deck or you know, like oxygen farms or something along those lines. It just, it needs something up there, but I'm not really sure of what exactly that would be. And one thing I'm really happy about though, whenever they done the updated models and textures was how this area came out. Everything kind of flows together well. It has that more wired look is what I was going for. So we've got our missile racks on either side and then the assembler in the middle and then the three by three wheels. Um, acting as like a base and then we've got the I think they're the efficiency modules is kind of there underneath all the cut down grading so you get like that kind of uh, it kind of looks like the top of like a skyscraper almost where they've got like all that HVAC stuff up there and then you know uh, some of the high powered areas and then the view running from the outside to the inside of the new cockpit looks Pretty cool. Um, I'm kind of happy with it right now. So that's where we're going to end today. Um, sorry, my voice is kind of haggard. And uh, hopefully we'll see you on the next one. And thanks for watching. I very much appreciate it.